Sitting some 26 miles northeast of Trinidad is Tobago, gem of the Caribbean. Only about 116 square miles, this tropical emerald island stands out for its beauty and strategic importance. No wonder it was fought for and changed hands some 33 times among the European powers of the day. Christopher Columbus sighted Tobago in 1498 and named it Bellaforma. At the time of European contact, Tobago was inhabited by island Caribs. Tobago became a Spanish colony in 1502. The natives were then called Tavaco after the long pipes they smoked and inhaled of the plant Vokohiba. The name Tobago seems to be derived from a combination of these circumstances. The Spanish never inhabited or colonized Tobago. For the first 125 years following discovery, the island appeared to be uninhabited and significantly became a haven for pirates. The first European settlers were Cotlanders in 1654. However, in 1608, James I of England claimed sovereignty over the island. And for the next 200 years, Tobago changed hands between the Dutch, French, English, and Cotlanders. The island was finally ceded to the British in 1803, who officially united it to Trinidad in 1889. Tobago subsequently became a crown colony, which in 1962 became the independent Commonwealth nation of Trinidad and Tobago. In 1976, that nation became a republic within the Commonwealth. The following thoughts are silent witnesses of the struggle for ownership of this beautiful land. Fort James, one of the oldest colonial forts on the island, overlooks Great Cortland Bay on Plymouth's coral headland. Originally called Jackaforts or Fort Jacob after its Cortland founder, Fort James's original fortifications date back to the 1650s. The fort endured a battle for its ownership. The French captured Fort James in 1781, but it was recaptured by the British in 1793. Again in 1802, the French regained ownership. The British built the current coral block fort during the early 1800s, after recapturing the island from the French for the final time. Today, Fort Milford stands just about a five minutes walk from Crown Point International Airport. It was constructed by the British in 1777. The French took it over in 1781, but the British regained its ownership in 1793 and restructured the fort in 1811. What is left of Fort Milford today are walls that were made of coral limestones and six cannons that were strategically placed for defense. Fort King George was one of the last colonial forts to be built in Tobago. Formerly known as Fort Castries, Fort King George was started by the French to protect Port Louis, renamed Scarborough, after they took the island from the British 
1781. Six years later, the British recaptured the island, added further to the fort's defenses, and renamed it Fort King George. Other forts of interest are Fort Bennett, overlooking Black Rock Beach. It was built by the Dutch sometime between 1628 and 1636. Fort Granby, built in the 1760s to protect Tobago's first short-lived capital, Georgetown. It was a major British fort in Tobago until the building of Fort King George. This land of verdant hillsides is indeed a beauty to behold. A range of wooded mountains runs centrally along the island, the highest point being Pigeon Peak near Speyside. The area houses Tobago Forest Reserve, which claims to be the oldest protected forest reserve in the Western world. Adjoining this forest reserve in a wooded area of bamboo, abundant cocoa estates, and seemingly untouched tropical forests is the Argyle Falls. This fall is a photographer's paradise. Watch the Argyle Falls as it tumbles majestically from cascading rocks to a river beneath flowing between rocks and beneath bamboo groves. The only route to the falls is a walk through the forest which is well wooded. Tobagonians are proud of the two offshore islands, namely St. Gill's Island off Charlottesville and Little Tobago. Little Tobago, the more popular of the two, also called Bird of Paradise Island, is located one and a half miles from Speyside. Little Tobago is one of the most important seaboard sanctuaries in the West Indies. More than 50 species of birds make this island their home, including laughing gulls and red-billed topic birds.
The best dry forest remaining in Tobago can be experienced on this small island. Little Tobago was a cotton plantation in the latter part of the 18th century, outdoing the rest of Tobago in its yield per acre. Sugar cultivation was attempted around the turn of the century, when the cotton industry collapsed. But the island was eventually abandoned as it proved unsuitable. In 1909, the island was purchased by Sir William Imgram, who introduced a colony of birds of paradise, which disappeared from the island after the Hurricane Flora in 1963. The island was consequently presented to the government of Trinidad and Tobago and has remained a bird sanctuary since. The sea between Speyside and Little Tobago is shallow, and glass bottom boats enable the attractive corals and brightly colored fish to be seen on the crossing. The island itself is hilly, which adds to its beauty. As a whole, Tobago is primarily hilly and volcanic in origin. However, the southwest of the island is flat and consists largely of coralline limestone. Some of the best beaches in the Caribbean could be found in Tobago. Store Bay. Boku Bay. Mount Irving This map of Tobago shows other beaches where one can go diving, snorkeling, or swimming. Archaeological evidences help to support the fact that Tobago was first inhabited by pre-Columbian peoples.
The Europeans who came afterwards were mainly involved in plantation agriculture, utilizing the labor of African slaves for the lucrative trade. Crops such as cotton, sugarcane, cocoa flourished depending on the demand of the European markets. In 1791, over 90% of Tobago's 15,000 residents were African slaves, most of whom worked on the many plantations island-wide. The majority of the white population then were Scottish. Tobago once had 80 to 90 plantations with fine old houses, but Hurricane Flora in 1963 flattened almost all those mansions and the plantations as well. These old windmills and water wheels tell their own stories of the past. Look at us, discarded water wheels of Arnos Vale, discarded water wheels of Speyside, windmill at Mount Irvin converted to an elegant hotel, windmills of Friendship and Golden Grove estates turned into residential homes, silent reminders of bygone days. If we could speak, we would tell you of how many slaves got whipped and branded. We would tell you how many landowners overworked their slaves to keep us turning. If we could speak, we would tell you of the elegant lives enjoyed by the lords and ladies of those great houses, all because of the enormous profits churned out for them. If we could speak, we would tell you why so many wars were fought over this land, if we could speak. If we could only speak, you will understand the genesis of the Tobagonian society, if we could speak. At present, the principal economic forces specific to Tobago are tourism, and government spending. Tourism is concentrated in the southwest of the island around Crown Point, Stobe, Pigeon Point, and Buku Reef. But there are many other idyllic beaches around Tobago.
Like it. Great weather, good food, good food, uh -huh. good weather, great, great people. That's nice. You think you're coming here? Of course. Under the palm. Yes. Under the palm. You can take a. Um, how long have you been in the neighborhood? Two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. How are you enjoying it? Very nice. Right. You think you'll come again? Yes, and I have been here before too. Oh, you have been here before? Yes. Oh, so it's a repeat? What? Yeah. And uh, how about you, Where are you from? We're from Sweden. You're from Sweden? Yes. What did you do all the way here to Tobago? Yeah. I have heard Tobago is very nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm not uh, disappointed. You're not disappointed? Uh, no. So are you, are you enjoying yourself? Oh yes, oh, really. Yes. Yes. From Sweden. From Stockholm. Oh, how are you enjoying it here in Tobago? Very nice. Very nice. Lovely. Eh? Is it the first time? No, the fifth time. Fifth? Yeah. Oh, well, it must be really great for you. Yes. Oh dear. It is. Well, uh, have a good time. Yeah. Do, but don't get sunburned. Don't overdo. I'm trying not to. Uh -huh. but, um, the reason why I'm particularly here is that I, I have a good friend who's from Trinidad and he's retired here. And last year I came to visit him and I thought, well, I'd like to come back and what I call live amongst the local people and see what life is about rather than living in a very nice area like Bacalet. So I've now been here about two weeks. You were right here and interviewing you. Yes. Well, that's right, yeah. And I'm living in a, in a small kind of apartment in Canaan. Okay. Quite cheap, but it's amongst local people, uh, and every day I seem to come down here and talk to local people. What do you like about the people? What do you find about the people? Yeah, that's a good mm. question. Mm. What do I find about the people? Are we talking about Tobagonians? Yes. Uh, specifically. I wouldn't be quite so complimentary as you were, as being so pure, mm. but they're very... Um, pretty straightforward. They always seem to be... Um, this is my experience of them, trying to get something off you, and, but you're never quite sure what their contribution. So they seem to have a, what I call a, a hard life to what I call make ends meet. And I can understand why they see me and many other people like me as having plenty of money, and they're quite happy to take it off me with a great deal of charm and conviction. And you wonder what's really going on, but that's what's really going on. But uh, it's funny because they play a lot of very skilled games, mm -hmm. and particularly the women. I, 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 they you attract. Like, you like the women? Oh yeah, love them. Oh, why do you like the women? Well, they ha have a very great sexuality for me. Oh. That really does pull me to, to the women. Yeah, it's a very sort of strong physical kind of sexual attraction. And why do you think that the, the women here attract you physically I, more than the women um, elsewhere? I would love to be, I've been searching for that answer for a long time in my life. Mm -hmm.
Now the small black fish is a see the yellow tail. It's a yellow tail damsel fish. The small little black ones we call those the fighters. Now, those are the ones like when you go snorkeling and they stand one place too long, they just start their energy. Mm -hmm. all those are the big blue fish, the blue one you see the yellow by steel. It's a rainbow parrot fish. The one you see all the blue lipstick or green parrot fish. The people of Tobago are just as marvelous as the land itself and the history which molded its culture over the past 500 years. In, in Tobago, uh, Tobago waters. waters on the north coast. All right, okay, that's what's so nice. Yes. And all this is part. Uh -huh. This is shark, uh -huh. already skinned. Uh, you know, uh, when I come to Tobago, or when anybody come here, where they can get on the water? Right, right here at number 52 store, uh -huh. V Gray. V -gray. Just ask V. I find your time and boy look very good. Well. And that's how they make them big to, to impress the customer. Oh. Do, you, do, you, uh, do you have some special taste in that tunnel ball that, um, that nobody else has? Yes. All right. Mm. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good to you. All right. <laughs> I noticed that you're selling something here. Um, what's that you're selling? Well, this, well, this is planting. This is what we... We call planting. planting yeah, you know, you have the different types of planting. Oh, have, oh, right. Yeah, you oh. have, um, you know, what they call half cost planting, and then you have the French planting. Uh -huh. You know, um, if you notice that this, this, this is a different type, you notice the grains are more fat, uh -huh. and then these are the French planting. Uh -huh. You understand? Okay, so there are two different kinds of plants. Yes, there are two different kinds, different, different kinds. Yes. Right, okay. Okay. And um, how do you eat them? How do you prepare them to? Well, uh, you can eat them green. Some people like them green. Uh -huh. And, you know, um, people pound them and you make something like a cuckoo with the green ones. You can boil it and make something like a cuckoo. Uh -huh. okay. or, you, or you can um, boil these, these when they're ripe. Okay. You cook them. Okay. And you can even fry them, slice them and fry them. Some people like them fried. When they're ripe. When they're ripe. Uh -huh. People like them fried. Nestled in the 15 valleys and around the coastline, the present population of Tobago stands about 55,000. Of this number, 90% are of African origin. The other 10% is a mixture of different races. The capital is Cabo, 
with a population of 17,000. Other towns of note are Roxborough and Plymouth. Between the years 1990 and 2000, the population of Tobago grew by 11.28%, making it one of the fastest growing areas of the country of Trinidad and Tobago. Despite the rapid growth of tourism, the people of Tobago haven't lost their charm and simple lifestyle. Although standard English is more widely spoken today, one can still hear Tobagonian patois, especially in remote villages as Charlotteville, Castara, and Palatovere. The culture of Tobago is as colorful as its history. The native Amerindians, the diverse European settlers, and the Africans have all left their footprints on the cultural landscape of Tobago. In this cultural conglomerate, the African element stands out strongly with the ability to adapt and transform. Take the Boku goat race as an example. The African must have admired the horse races put on by his slave masters and later his colonial overlords. Although the African could not have afforded a horse, he did not complain. Instead, he used what he had, the goat, and what an event did he make of it.
Which instrument is called a tambourine? A tambourine. A tambourine. All right. This is made up or comprised of wood skin. Okay. A piece of wood. It's a strip to make it firm. Okay. Right? So that, that's Tobago its own produce? Yes, Tobago own produce. Because? Well, our forefathers used like when they had weddings. All right. And these things. Okay. Know? We use this as, you know, we had no DG and everything. I don't know in those days. Yeah. Right. So that's the local stuff. Yeah. Tobagonians can be quite unique and creative. Nowhere else on earth can you find such a thing as a crab race, except in Tobago. Tobago jig so African, yet so European, is unique to Tobago. 
Observe that special movement of the head and those intermittent swift movements of the feet. Though looking so innately African, these movements are cast in a mold of European walls or minuet. The ballet is not unique to Tobago. Caribbean islands such as Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada, and Trinidad that have been influenced by French culture are among the group where ballet is practiced. It evolved from the slaves' mimicry of their masters when having their grand balls. In many ways, Tobagonians have added their own twist to this popular folk dance.
the Tobago speech bands clearly bring out the folk language of Tobago, as well as its unique humor. of Tobago's cultural expression is so thorough as the Tobago wedding. It is a holistic representation of Tobago's folk culture. You will hear Tobago Creole, see waltzes and jigs, see Tobago styles, understand the customs, they are all brought together nicely.
come to light in the Tobago Heritage Festival, which spans a two-week period from mid-July to the first day of August each year. The Heritage Festival expresses the soul of the Tobagonian. No commentary on Tobago is complete without including religion. It is the golden cord that binds the hearts of Tobagonians together. The Anglican Church, the Methodist Church, and the Moravian Church have all left their imprints on the people of Tobago. The spiritual Baptist religion in Tobago is the amalgamation of European Christianity and traditional African religions. Lately, it has been gaining quite a sizable foothold in Tobago. Tobago, the land, its history, the people, the culture. Tobago has much more to offer than its size. Anyone who visits this beautiful island, also referred to as Robinson Crusoe's Island, must return. But still I will tell you as fuck. When people come here, they always come back. For some so capable. In my life, deserve capable. But again, still hear what I have to say. People love Tobago people all the way. Some do fishing, some do planting, some do carving for lovely living. And with all, after all, we have lovely beaches and lovely waterfall. And right now, hear what I have to say. Come to Bego right away. And listen, what I want you all to know is a beautiful island they call Tobago. So children, anywhere you all may be, please have Tobago in your memory. And again, still hear what I have to say. Have Tobago in your minds for eternity. All 